All right. Let me change to the right mode here. Hey, uh, this is Watch Me Work. It's what day is it? Is it Thursday? Is it Thursday? Somebody tell me what day it is. It's Thursday. It is Everybody Thursday. said, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, great. I'm going to give a little blurb and then we'll get started. I'm Susan Laurie Parks. This is Watch Me Work. This is, um, we're doing it uh, Monday through Friday at five. Uh, this is, we're in our second week of doing that. Um, for those of you who have not been to Watch Me Work before, Watch Me Work is about your work and your creative process where we will spend some time working together and then spend some time talking. I'll be answering your questions about your work and your creative process. I'm a writer of lots and lots and lots of different things. I've been doing this show, Watch Me Work, for 11 years, primarily live in the lobby of the public theater. A uh, big thanks to the public theater who has and continues to support me in this endeavor. And also thanks to HowlRound. They came on a few years ago to live stream our live show. And now they are supporting this great endeavor. Also thanks to Zoom for helping it happen. But big thanks to the public theater and HowlRound. So this is how we do it. Watch Me Work is a show that we create together. Um, first thing we do is we work together for 20 minutes create the action of the play. Here's my timer. We're going to time it for 20 minutes. And then after the 20 minutes has elapsed, we will, I will take your questions about your creative process. Um, and that's the dialogue of the play, if you will. Kind of sort of, it's kind of meta or something. I don't know. I didn't go to grad school, but that's what my students say. So anyway, this is what we're going to do. We're going to work together. We're going to talk about your work and your creative process and uh, hopefully we'll give you some encouragement, you know, keep your creative juices moving along, give you some, you know, good energy in these difficult times and all that kind of stuff. Anything else to ask questions and all that, our moderator, is it, it's not Audrey today. Who's our moderator today? Tell me. Uh-oh. Me, everyone. Um, yeah. Yes, if you would like to ask a question during the questions portion and you're inside the Zoom, please click the raise your hand button. It should be in the participants tab, more than likely on the bottom of your screen. If you're using an iPad, it's more than likely on the top of your screen. I will see those that raise their hand and I will call on you and unmute you when it's your time to speak. If you are watching the stream on HowlRound.tv, you can ask questions via the public theaters, Instagram and Twitter. And you can also ask questions via the Watch Me Work Twitter which is at Watch Me Work SLP. Don't forget to use the hashtag HowlRound. That's H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And that's it. Thanks, Amber. There you are. Okay, so um, we're going to work together for 20 minutes. Uh, if you're confused, that's okay. <laughs> Join the club. Here we go. Eh, eh.
All right, here we are. We um, just did 20 minutes of work. Hope it was nice for some of you, for all of you, actually. Um, and uh, now we're gonna do uh, the remaining amount of time. Questions, questions, who's got a question? Well, Natalia has a question. Natalia, are you here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm here. There you are. Okay, hi. Hi. Um, so my question will be, um, so I asked you a question, I think Friday last week, and it was about just like, how do I make my work that is personal? Um, uh, how do I write something that's personal and like balance the, the two things um, while writing? And I actually um, had a moment of inspiration and it was one of those moments where I just kept writing and writing and writing and I didn't really have any plans or structure. Um, I just went for it. And um, I realized it was a lot of um, dialogue that was just like in my head and I was letting like the, the people speak to me because it's based on real life and a uh, true story. So um, my question would be once that, um, I guess inspiration is timed out, how do I go back and um, weed through the, uh, the structure? Cause right now it's just, it's pretty much word vomit. Um, and I'm just trying to get out all the ideas out um, when it comes to me, whether it's on paper or on my phone through a note app or something, but how do I go back and revisit that? Sorry, that's my bird. Um, how do I go back and visit that um, with a more clear picture? Great question, Natasha. Great question. Um, glad you're writing. Glad you're doing what you call word vomit. Very cool. Um, yeah. So have you have you gotten to the like the the end of your word vomit? You know. Um, no, I haven't. I I actually don't even know what my end looks like yet. All I know is that the big theme of the play is about family, um, and dynamics just like the different family dynamics and even though there's a lot of uh conflict within families or um or just just like i just lost my, my train of thought but so i haven't thought of an ending it's just when I, right now it's just a lot of like memory recall mm -hmm. and uh being back home because right now i'm at my mom's place yeah. Uh, I, I guess it also is what inspired me to continue writing and just like observing and watching um, how we all interact with one another. So it, it's um, it's just one of those moments where I just keep writing and kind of reliving or just observing what's ha what's happened so far. Right, right, right. Um, what I wanted to know is if you've gotten to sort of the end because writing and rewriting, uh, while they look very much alike, are two different processes, right? We did we talk about that. Uh, the courage of writing, the courage of rewriting, the courage of, as you call it, and as I call it too, you know, word vomit, just vomiting out, right? It takes courage to just, anything goes, everything grows, being in the writing process. And then it yeah. takes this, the other kind of courage is the rewriting process where you have to trim, cut, prune, select, right? I mean, if you mm -hmm. just think if you actually go Bleh, on the page, you actually were vomiting, right? Yeah. Um, it would take, it would take another kind of courage to actually look at what you throw up and go, hmm, I think that is, I think I'll, I'll pick this out, you know what I mean? And out of the vomit, um, this could be very interesting. I'll put that, you see what I'm saying? So that's a whole yeah. different kind of courage. Now, I asked you if you were at the end because I don't want you to, a, a lot of times it's fun to just let it out and let it go, but then we have a, a fear, our fear of writing is replaced by a fear of having it make sense. Right. Oh no, it has to make sense. So I better, I better find the, the, the theme or the story or the structure right away before I yeah, just spend too much time vomiting. Right. Yeah. 
right, kind of right. like dating when you're dating and then you go all of a sudden, oh, are we in a thing or are we just in a thing? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and, the, and the person goes, well, we've only been dating for seven years. Do we have to decide? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so I would, how, so you've been sort of vomit writing for how long? I mean, on this process? project um well because I was writing this play a few years back and then it just kind of paused because life was happening and then oh and then um I've had this time since being home uh just to continue writing um and I just have moments where it just kind of comes to my brain and then I write it down just because I don't want to lose that memory or because sometimes memory can be, you know, it can, your mind can play tricks on you with that. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's just a continuous thing because I guess within my family, it's just, it's been a lot of just different situations. So I just want to make sure that whatever I have in my head, I can put it on paper um, and then I guess rewrite after it's over, <laughs> but I feel great. like it's just so, pouring yeah. out. Yeah, so that great. So have, it, so have it pour out some more. You know what I mean? I'm, what I'm saying is how long have you been in this vomiting process? You know, it, it, oh, it's, it's, been, it's been like the past two weeks. Okay, great. Uh, so, so spend yeah. some more time just vomiting it out. And okay. when you get to the point where you're like, <laughs> okay, that's, I'm pretty much, I feel like I'm at the end of that process. Even if you, you know, after that, you know, come back to the vomiting process. But if you feel like you're at an end to the process, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Then you can stop that process and work on the rewriting process. But it doesn't sound like you're at an end. You see what I mean? I don't want you to be mixing them too much because what I hear is a concern that you need to start making sense of it all. And that might stop the flow. You see what I'm okay. saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so continue to do exactly what you're doing. Do it for a little longer and see what it feels like, like this time next week. You see okay. what I mean? You see? Yeah. Get more stuff out. We don't, okay? All right. Okay. <laughs> and and e e either uh, a couple of things are going to happen. Either you're going to vomit a lot and then you'll, you won't, you won't be able to make sense of it, right? Or Wait. you'll vomit a lot and you will somehow be able to make sense of it. Or you'll vomit out, you put it away in a drawer, whatever, whatever. I mean, we have to be like, whatever happens is going to happen and it will be what it is. For sure. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? And I think that yeah. Ramona's cat has heard your bird. Just observing Ramona has a cat, which is on screen, right? Is looking at Ramona <laughs> on screen. The cat is like going, where is the bird? I'm hearing something. I don't know what she's, anyway, I just was observing that. But uh, yeah. But you know what I'm saying, Natalia? So mm -hmm. keep continue to do exactly what you're doing. Keep showing up. Keep doing the vomit writing, as we call it. And and just keep doing it for a little while longer. See how you feel. See if something doesn't emerge on its own. But don't worry about it right now. Okay? All right. Thank you. Cool, cool. Thanks. It's Natalia. All right. Next, we have Melania. Hello. Hello Hi. from Miami. Hi. Hi. <laughs> from Miami. Hi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. Hi. I am so happy to be here and I would like to thank you because we talked last week. And since that, I, I think I am working on my courage of writing. Oh, right on. Yes. And suddenly with this, I love the talk to the hand, talk to the hand. So I began to do that writing yes because I write and when I write I can hear this voice saying no if I say hi the voice says low if it so I talk to the hand talk to the hand talk to the hand. it's like a choreography yes <laughs> and and it's working I I am writing so I want to thank you for that 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 was the the purpose of my talking and there is something that you said last week that I write it down and wrote it down and I would like to ask you about. You said, work is between you and the spirit. Accept the gifts that's been given. You talk about the spirit and writing and what I am right now discovering in, in me is when I 
I can stop the, the voices. I can hear myself better and my characters are able to go into action. That was my problem that we were all stuck. So I would like to know more about this talking between us and the spirit while, while we are writing. Thanks, Melania. I'm so glad your work is going well. Good for oh, you. I am so happy. Thank yeah. you very much. Good for you. And again, everyone, Melania has been calling in or tweeting in to the to our live show when we do it at the lobby in the public theater for uh -huh. years, for years. Yes. And yes. just now, because of doing it on Zoom, because of this Corona thing, I actually we get to see each other face to face. So it's a yes. great pleasure to get to know you like this. But I'm, I'm so glad that you're working. And yeah, the, the, a re, it's a relationship between you and the spirit, right? Your, yeah. your creative uh, process is a relationship between you and the spirit. And this isn't like those of you, those of us, whatever, it, it doesn't, it's not like your relationship with God, the white guy with the beard on the, you know, the, whatever, the dome of the Sistine Chapel. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the, a relationship between you and mm -hmm. that thing that's bigger than you. That's the spirit. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you can, and some of us see it as our, our, you know, friendship circle. I mean, certainly the watch me work community is something that's bigger than, than just us, than just, right. Okay. Maybe our, our people, our foremothers and our forefathers, that kind of thing. When I say the spirit, that, um, the thing that, that people connect with in times of difficulty. Mm -hmm. I'll go out on a limb and say whether that thing comes through or not it's still there, you know, the thing that, the, you know, spring, the idea of spring, you know, in, in, in the Western hemisphere, are we in the Northern, the Western hemisphere, wherever the fuck we are, the, the, I'm in New York, I don't know what's, I, I don't get to go outside anymore, which is a problem, but um, in the Northern hemisphere, we're, we're in spring, you know, and you look outside and you see, you have a sense of that thing that's bigger than, than all of us, right? Um, the thing we share, you know, the underground river of the spirit. When I say underground, you know, the, the, the thing beneath the surface of mm -hmm. shit, our shit, our daily stuff that all of us seem to be very invested in. But Whitley, when you sit down and, and feel it, you feel that, 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 so it's not myself, little s, you know, it's myself, the big S. The big S is the S of the spirit, you know? So uh, uh, being creative or doing your work, whether it's creative or not, I think the, the people in the medical profession now, the custodians, anybody helping in a big way in this difficult time that the whole world is having are really investing and in giving back to that bigger part of themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And so, the, and they're not necessarily creative, you know? Uh, necessarily the doorman in my building who sits there with a mask on bless his heart mm -hmm. you know and helps people with their packages and groceries and things he's not necessarily being creative but he is giving to the spirit you know uh, but we who are creative who have that gift um, are are just uh, strengthening our relationship with that thing that's bigger than us yes. and that's to me what creative work is is that, does that make sense? I kind of went off it on it. It makes a, a lot of sense. A lot yeah, of yeah. And that's yeah. why our work is important to me, to my, I mean, me, this is me, to, you know, it's not about the, the money you might make or, you know, who fabulous people might call you during Watch Me Work. If any of you saw me pick up my phone, it was a very fancy person <laughs> calling me. And, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I better pick up the phone and have this conversation. Um, I wanted to stay, I want to stay connected with that person, but it's not about the fancy people who might call you or who might not call you, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's about, to me, for me, it's about that connection. See, I have the hand of God in the background. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense okay. because I, I, I am, I am seeing that, that putting time and doing the work is making me discover things that, I never thought about myself, my life, but at the same time, I knowing myself, I am having the the energy and the, the bravery, if you want to, to, to make these characters and let them be. 
And right. it's an amazing thing to me because it was because we talk and you told me about this of the talk to the hand and and with this group that we are having, the squad, as you call the squad, that's yeah, right. As well. And it's so important because I am so thankful in the middle of all of this, you know, the, the homeschooling that I talked about the other day. You got three kids, well, three kids at home? Three kids at home. That's right. Yes. And all that stuff, having this time to, to connect with something that goes beyond me, but allows me to know myself and being, you know, able to explore uh, and maybe say something that to me is difficult that is I don't know sometimes and and it's okay to not know uh, it's a blessing so I wanted to thank you and I love what you said yeah and thank you thank you Melania really really your blessing and so okay. and here we are and this is but that's why Melania you know you're on to it that's why I'm doing that that's why we're here doing this and encouraging each other that's you know because this is going to give us an opportunity to learn something and like you said become brave and become more brave or braver and more courageous and you know so, yes thank you thank you thanks melania all right next we have diana diana are you there yes i am hello um thank you for this this has been really wonderful um i had a question um i've been asked to adapt a book uh, into a play, into a TYA. And I have, uh, I've never adapted anything before. Most of my stuff, all of my stuff is original. So I'm just wondering if you have any advice for how to begin and, or how to get the essence of it on paper. That's great. Congratulations. That sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah, I hope right? so. Is it a, is it a, is it a, it's a novel or a, a, a... yeah, it's a novel. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's a full length, like older young adult book. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and what's the form? You're going to adapt it into a a, a play. Right? Yes. Theater for young uh, theater for young audience. No. Well, yeah. 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 But theater for older older younger audiences. Okay. All ages. Like so. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Great. Great. Uh, and I, I'm guessing that you've read the novel, the book. Mm -hmm. Yes. More than, okay. Okay. And so you, do you ha really have the story under your you know under your belt on your fingers in your body? Not yet. Not okay. yet. I'm okay. I'm going to have to keep digging into it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have you done anything like, um, I mean, what I do, and I've done a lot of adaptation. I mean, a lot of original work and a lot of adaptation and both are a lot of fun. I, I think mm -hmm. um, making something up on my own is, is really enjoyable. Making something up uh, that another writer has already, she or he is already, they have already carved that path. Right. And, and so what I feel like I'm doing always, I mean, I've done, you know, Native Son, Their Eyes Are Watching God, I worked on Porgy and Bess, I mean, it's like big, huge things, but I feel like I'm always holding the hand, holding hands with the first writer, uh -huh. right, and, and I have a lot of respect for them, um, I don't take on a project to show them a thing or two, you know, a lot of people think, oh, she's adapting, you know, Porgy and Bess, she's gonna, you know, no, 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 I'm holding the hands, Gershwin's are holding my hand, and I'm very proudly walking alongside them to bring it into the next, you know, generation, if you will. So, yeah. I mean, in, you're, you're working with the writer, whether they're alive or passed away already, to bring this, this novel, this beautiful book that they wrote into its next incarnation, right? You're almost like a, a, a priestess, you know, mm -hmm. you're ferrying the spirit into the next incarnation. So it's a, it's a great thing that you're doing. It's a great service that you're doing to the first writer. And the, the first writer is doing a great service to you. Like, cause like I said, they've already carved out the, the main points of the story. Now in a novel, the, the requirements are different, as you know, than in a play or in a TV play or in a teleplay. So you're going to have to maybe do some editing, some inventing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it should flow as a, uh, a, a, a dramatic work, right? Mm -hmm. So I would suggest if you haven't already, this is my census card again, but it's the same size as a, 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 an index card, but you know, get some cards, you know, and write down the main story points, right? Okay. You may have already typed them out already, but you can write them down. You don't have to put a lot of people at storyboard. You don't have to put it on the wall. Um, you can just have them and put them on your desk, lay them out, but get those main story points down. Start telling yourself the story, right? Start thinking of it 
again, I'm sorry. I'm so, is it a, it's a, you're adapting it into a play? Yes, it's a book. Oh. It's a, it's a book being adapted into a play. Into a play. Okay. So you have to think of the story mm -hmm. and then it might need an act break, mm -hmm. right? So it, one act break or two act breaks or however many. So you, so you, you, you should think of it like that. And then again, a novel, a book has, you know, maybe chapter breaks, right? Mm -hmm. That could help you uh, create the scenes. But in a theater piece, you're going to probably need maybe an act break. Maybe not, you know, but mm -hmm. so you'll, but you'll want to get those, those big story points really at your fingertips in your head all the time. Okay. Yep. Um, and just remember that the original writer, the first writer is working with you. They are helping you. So mm -hmm. lean on them, hold their hand, walk beside them, talk to them, not in, not for real, you know, even if yeah. they're living, but through their work. Yeah. Be in conversation with them as much as possible. Yeah, okay. this is really helpful. The, the, the novel is cut into sort of journal entries. Uh -huh. And so there's a lot of natural dialogue in it, but, but I, I was being really binary about it's a journal. Do you know what I mean? Until yeah. now, you just said about pulling the story points out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think yeah. about the story points. Okay. Think about the story points. And would a journal be the best, coolest, dramatic way you could tell it? Right. Maybe. Or is do you need to do something else? Something that's 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 deliciously theatrical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, um, and again, journal, the journal entries could be told. I mean, we have in, in theater drama, we have the soliloquy, which could be like a journal entry, maybe, you know, we do have the convention of breaking the fourth wall and talking to the audience that could be employed. You could mix and match. You could, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, of techniques that you can, you can employ in theater that will help you tell the story. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Have fun. Sounds like a great opportunity. Yeah, it, it, it will be. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Of course. Thanks, Diana. Next, we have Rebecca. Rebecca, are you there? I'm muted. There she is. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Susan Laurie. It's hey, Rebecca. Rebecca. From NYU, actually, from collaboration class. Back All right. Hey, it's good to see you. Hi. Um, good to see you, Rebecca. <laughs> Good to see you too. This has been great. Um, so, okay, I have some notes here. Um, so I'm enjoying what I write and I have a bunch of small pieces, many beginnings to things that sort of stand alone. And um, they sort of accumulate in all these tabs I have, but they feel all related to the same play. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like my, they're all part of my blah, blah, blah play. Like I think, oh, maybe they're they're standalone and then they just all sort of center back around this same theme. Um, they're very much not linear. And I feel like I hear a lot or I don't hear much um, in these conversations about like experimental pieces that are, you know, um, sometimes I'm not even interested in their dramaticness. They're very sensorial or experiential. And so I'm curious if you have suggestions about um, or thoughts about how to continue to focus those things into one piece um, and or stuff that actually I think I read you from, from something in an introduction to your like plays once, which was about content informing form. Um, I don't know if that it rings a bell, but it had a big impact on me then. So um, that is what I'm, that's what I'm experiencing and, and, and interested in, in the, in, the, in the idea of trying to get to middles and ends of things and not just in beginnings and enjoying, you know, a sort of collage, kaleidoscope experience or something, um, but wanting to share it. Cool. That yeah. sounds like a great project, Rebecca. And, you know, again, we, we, the, the conversation is shaped by the questions that are asked and not by any specific agenda that I have. So if people want to talk about uh, certain kinds of art making or theater making or all that, of course I can talk about it, but I wouldn't want to lay on, you know, my <laughs> experimental shit on y'all <laughs> if you don't want to hear it. Lay it, so, uh, I want it. 
<laughs> well, the, the great thing about uh, not really, you know, being more interested in the experimental sh stuff is that um, it can go so many ways, and yet you have to be very, very disciplined and rigorous uh, with your your creative process and your ear and your architecture, right? Because because you know shotgun shacks or shotgun houses are popular for a reason. You know how to people know how to build them. They know how to put them down. Boom, 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 boom right? Okay, experimental things are maybe less popular. They require the architect or the writer to be very, very rigorous in her design because at the end of the day, you still want it to be habitable. I'm using that metaphor. You still want it to, you still want it to be watchable. You still want it to be an experience. You want it to have an end. You know what I mean? You said, you said, so you have to be very, even much more rigorous. Um, writing, uh, I, I got to say, and I've written you know, writing stuff like Death of the Last Black Man in the Whole Entire World, aka Negro Book of the Dead, was a lot harder than writing a teleplay for television. Sure. Because a teleplay for television has to be a certain thing, and it already has the rules defined. When I go out into the experimental thing, there are, the rules are different and harder to discover. Mm -hmm. What you can do is, to, if you have many of these collage pieces, oh, look, I found another piece of paper. Um, yeah, this is small. This is cute. <laughs> you can put them on little pieces of paper like this, or again, you can use an index card. Yes. Okay? And you can, so I, I imagine you have them written down somewhere. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. But probably not on. Mm -mm. Great. Okay. So you can put them on cards like this. Little, I mean, you don't have to fit the whole thing on the card. Just put the sort of meat of it or the bones of it, right? Yeah, totally. Okay? So you put it on a card, right? And then you put all of them on cards. So mm -hmm. you have them sort of a whole big stack. I don't know how many you have, big, little, whatever, a stack, mm -hmm. a stack. Oh my God, mm -hmm. right? You have a huge stack of them. And then you can just start going, hey, I'd like to see this one first. Mm -hmm. Oh, this would be cool after that one, right? That th These three in a row would be great. Yeah. I don't know where that one goes yet. Oh, I don't like, I got to rewrite that one. I don't even know what it's about. You know, mm -hmm. oh, this and this and this and this and this. And then that, boom. Okay, great. Then we have these three, you know, you could, you just start to organize them um, by sort of listening to your internal rhythm, but that has to be strong. For sure, for okay? sure. And, and it, it, it sounds like a lot of fun, but try that, you know, try just starting to organize them and you might, um, if they're on, you put them on cards, you can number them in the corner in pencil, right? Cause they might change but you might you might you know if you don't have a board big board or a big wall you're going to put them on you might want to just number them in pencil if you shuffle them around in your hands you know mm -hmm. um okay dope just start to organize them yeah. yeah yeah it'll help to visualize it um the documents i get you know i get stuck but putting them up on the wall will be sure will up be on the fun. wall down on the floor in your hand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for yeah. your light. Uh, yeah. Thanks for yours. Mm. Thanks, Rebecca. All right. Now we have about eight minutes left. Um, next, we do have Nancy. Nancy, are you there? Oh, wow. Hi. Hi. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, you went away again. You're a lamp today, Nancy. Yeah, the, 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 your connection is to my ear is very um, intermittent. Can you hear me? I'm. I'm... Keep, keep talking. I, I, I kind of can, kind of can't, but we'll see what we can do. I, I, someone has to unmute me. me. Um, can you hear me? me? I'm, I'm speaking. speaking. I. I... You, you're in, you, are, you are unmuted, but your voice is it's, uh, it's breaking up. Uh, now you're muted, to my board anyway. Unmuted now. How's that? that? You are unmuted. You're again. The connection sounds very uh, poor, or dodgy. Uh, Keep talking. Let's see if we can make sense out of it. Go ahead. Go I'll ahead. just be brief, brief and I'm brave though. Two days in a row. I guess my luck is finally changing. Um, okay. okay I, I, I work, work in different. different I work on different projects. projects. 
somewhat, somewhat at the same, same time, time except, except a lot of times, times things get started, they, started, they, they don't get finished because I jump from one, one to the other. You, you talk, talk about, about working on projects, and I know yours get finished. What's, What's the, the best way, way to, uh, to, to do, do that, that dance? And, and how, you know, do, 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 do you at the beginning of the week think, think I'm, I'm going to do, do I'm going to put this amount of time on something, or is it instinctual? Some, Some of it's for paying gigs, most, most of it isn't, isn't but they're all important. So, so I, I really need a, a kind of sure. Thanks. I got. It. I'm jumping in because it's it's yeah, hard yeah. to hear. A lot of people are texting that you should type it to me, but I think I got it. I think I got it. Um, you're working on a couple of different projects, uh, more than one different project at a time, right? And yes. what uh, what how might we suggest that you um, rotate those projects, right? Yes, thank you. Great. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I work on a lot of different projects at once. And so uh, you can do it in a variety of ways. Um, and we all, even if you're not working on different creative projects at once, maybe you got your homeschooling and you're, you know, you got to make dinner, you got to wipe down your home again with disinfectant. I mean, you got a lot of different things going on these days. Um, but if it's creative projects, you can do it in a couple of different ways, Nancy. Um, the the you can do it by hours two hours on project a followed by a tea time or what a little break palate cleanser you know or go out for a walk or whatever then maybe two hours on project b you can do it like that sort of taking time chunks during the day for each project you can also do it like mondays are for project a tuesdays are for project a wednesdays are for project b thursdays are for project b you see what i mean so you can divide it, you can, you can um, cut the day into pieces like this. I'm like the calendar, right? Google calendar, or you can do it like this. Um, or you can say one whole week on project A, then put it down, you know, get to the finish line, some kind of finish line, the end of an act, the end of a, uh, a you know, end of series or whatever you want to do, right? And then yeah. next week on project B, I'll work on that. Then next week back on project A, you can do it like that. Um, it's and it, it yeah and it's it's fun it's fun to work on things like that I, I i do it a lot and you can get a lot of things done in in a month as opposed to just one thing at a time if you right. have to work like that yeah right, right. So, so you, you yeah. yeah okay but you, you know, know when you come to the if you're doing it you know when you, know when you come to your end piece, piece that's, that's what you said, said. uh can you hear me no you know you do i know when i come to the what so well, again, where, where you can, can leave, leave one project, project and go to the, the other. other. It's, it's, yes, where I can leave one project. Uh, do I know where I can leave one project and go to another? Yeah. yeah. I, I decide. Basically, if I say I'm working on project uh, A for two hours today, beep, 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 timer goes off. It's two hours. That's where I leave the project. I put a, uh, I get a, out my highlighter. And um, I write in the script. If it's a re if I'm rewriting, I circle it and I say start here. Go to page seventy two, whatever, like that. Or if uh, it's a new project, I put a I you know put. It's easy to find where I'm still working on it. You know, maybe I put a post it in my notebook. Remember that tomorrow you're going to do X Y Z on this project. Sure. Um, if it's timed wise, if it's I'm working on project A for a week. When the week's over. There you go. Stop. Right. Go yeah. to the next project. Yeah, so it requires yeah. a kind of it requires a kind of of discipline. You have to sit down and work folk in a focused way for the amount of time that you've allotted yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks. Thanks. All right. We have time for one more. Next, we have Jenny. Jenny, are you there? Um, hi, thank you so much for having this. Um, I am thrilled to, you, to discover it on HowlAround. Um, I have a, um, I'm intimidated by a project that I'm working on because it is a um, true story. And I'm working with a climate change scientist who um, is suing the Trump administration um, because they tried to censor her. And um, I have her whole story and, you know, we're working together and I applied for a Sloan grant 
um, which was a one page um, outline. Uh -huh. And um, because there are certain things like her husband and she, her husband report, uh, supports her, but the only antagonist I have is basically the, the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't come along until later. And I, I don't know if there should be a conflict in her marriage. Can I add things? And, you know, I'm just, it's intimidating me because her actual story is extremely dramatic. Um, and I, I don't want to change it too much, but um, I'm nervous about it um, not being, the, not grabbing uh, the audience right away. And, and can I change things as, as it, you know, as important as her relationship with her husband, for instance, what if he didn't support her um, in, in change, making the changes that the Trump administration tried to force her to change, which was censoring. Right, 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 right. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Is it Jeannie, your name? Jeannie? Jenny. Jenny, Jenny. Okay. It's amazing, Jenny, that you're more intimidated <laughs> um by the changing the facts of this person's life than the trump administration which is amazing which means you must be a superhero and wear a cape um i i mean my personal feeling is i would personally i would not want to show someone's good marriage in a bad light just to grab an audience that's my personal that's my own that code you know what i'm saying yeah, I don't um, okay so so let's not then don't do it don't do it. Okay, so that means you got to dig deeper. What's great is you've discovered that you need to engage an audience. Okay, a lot of writers don't even know, right? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so you need to engage an audience. So how do we do that in a way that is going to, you know, like Emily Dickinson said, tell all the truth, but tell it slant success and circuit lies, right? So you got to dig deep. I mean, that's not what Emily Dickinson says, they dig deep. Um, but you got to dig a little deeper. Okay, maybe you have to what we call um, cut deep, like start at a place of conflict. Okay, yeah, maybe I, you have to go ahead. Um, I had st I start where she's in front of Congress, at, you know, being being um, you know uh, tr the Republicans are trying to discredit her, but right. it's a, a Congress, and then as she tells her story, the flashbacks show what really happened. Great. And, Great. Um, okay. And then okay. there's the personal part of her, which is that she is British and she worked really hard to get rid of her Cockney accent because she came from a tough neighborhood and she wanted to be respected as a, and she got her PhD here in America as a science climate scientist. And when she's at the top at the crisis point where they're really battering her that's when this tough girl um, when she, from her Cockney neighborhood comes out. So I don't know whether I should start with her trying to work to get rid of you know, that tough part of her and be the nice girl, or I should start with um, her being you know, on, on the committee where they're, they're interrogating, you know, and, interviewing her right right I, I don't know i mean i think you're are you working with producers or or no no it's just me and her yeah. i okay. mean my, my okay. friend and mentor um Sandra medley she's like helping me oh, you great. Know, me advice. Oh, great oh great but i i mean i don't know where you should start i mean i think your your material is going to dictate where you should start and how you should flash back it sounds really exciting but just for my money i wouldn't make her a good marriage bad okay Okay, I would just dig deeper in that and find other things that are compelling and dramatic and interesting uh, to uh, see so that you can you can continually engage your reader. Sorry, the sun's on my face. Okay, right? okay. The heck out of me. Huh? <laughs> it intimidates me to be able to do it right. So. Oh well, I mean, you've been called. Those of us who are called to do big projects. I mean, I'm working on something about Aretha Franklin right now. I mean, you know big there's big you know we're called to do big projects about big people um uh you, you're there for a reason you've been called you're gonna answer you're gonna hide in the corner right. you know what i'm saying and we're all called to do various things in our lives the, the question is are you going to answer the call or are you going to hide in the corner it sounds like you're going to answer the call 
-hmm. yeah yeah be yeah be intimidated you can feel the weight of the responsibility yeah but lean into it you know what i mean and just know that you'll you'll get it right if you keep working at it you know yeah. you might not get it right in the first draft or whatever that's fine uh, you know very few of us get it right in the first draft who cares okay you know? Okay, just keep working at it, though. Keep keep working at it. And it's thank a great question. Much. It's a great project, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, thanks, Jenny. It is 6.04 p.m. We okay. should definitely do this tomorrow. Yeah, let's let's do this tomorrow. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, just a reminder, you can sign up to be in each day's Zoom class at publictheater.org by 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each day. Um, we will email the link out between 3 and 4.30 p.m. And the following week's sign-up links will be released tomorrow at 3 p.m. as well. So see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow. Have a great, have a great